Hello everyone, this is John Tim from Shanghai Tokyo University. Today I will share the topic Giant VM, a tab to have a better implementing managed one virtualization. The talk consists of three parts. In the first part, I will introduce our motivation and background. The second part introduces our prototype Giant VM based on the managed one virtualization. The evaluation will be given in the third part. Here is the first part. A Moore's law does not take effect anymore. Develops perspective. I have to think about how to make use of more computation resources. Generally speaking, there are two methods to, to deal with this. First, scale up aggregate CPUs and memory in one machine. The interface imposed in applications in ISA. The benefit of scale up is it requires no quality of the existing software. Of course, software here is designed for multi core applications. But its disadvantages are lethal and too expensive. Another approach is Scalab. It aggregates multiple cheap machines with network and big data framework. And cheap, of course. The problem is that interfaces provided by Scalab, like MPI, MicroUse, and RDD, are not user friendly. And it requires huge engineering efforts to port existing software. The advantages of two methods can be combined into a single system image. The SSI uses the network to connect cheap machines while well, keeps consistent standard LSA abstraction. Thus, the application can make use of a huge amount of computational resources without parting. In recent years, with the widely research of high speed network transmission technology like RDMA, there is an interest in SSI again. The single system images have different types. For memory aggregation, there are one or more memory nodes connected to the main node. Or put I.O. devices on another node. The most common approach is to segregate storage nodes and computation nodes. There is also distributed OS. Each node has an OS instance. As I said, is also implemented as a hypervisor layer. The consistent way can be kept by the hypervisor. This is the type of our work users. The common usage of virtualization is one to many. That is, when physical machines can be virtualized as multiple virtual machines, the virtual machines can be allocated to different users to implement, implement resource isolation or scheduling. Our work follows the opposite of methodology. That is, that is, multiple physical machines are virtualized as one more virtual machine. The final result is that we use many to one implements SSI. In the next part, I briefly describe the design of our prototype system, Giant Bear. There is one to one instance at each node of the cluster. Each instance is in charge of part of the resources, several CPUs, memory, or several I.O. devices. Besides, this instance is, is to keep consistency between different nodes. We know the one now event architecture consists of three components, CPU, I.O., and memory. And the main design of Giant VM is to make these three distribu distributed. CPU is distributed originally in real hardware, and the I.O. devices are centralized. Multiple users are usually multiplexed by the device driver. And there is a master I.O. node which all the requests of a device are routed to. For the distributed memory, we use the classic distributed shared memory. For virtualization of CPU and I.O., we mainly focus on the communication between nodes. For example, CPU 0 sends an IP to CPU 1, where both CPUs are at different nodes. Our approach is split over. After an instruction is trapped to the hardware, we check whether the destination is a remote node. If so, we just forward it accordingly. Basically, the CPU and the I.O. virtualization are split forward. But there are some more details about them. When sending APIs, the messages are broadcast to all the CPUs. Upon the reception, each vCPU checks whether it should accept or abandon the message according to the three registers, PSAID, LDR, and FDR. And in a, in a distributed environment, we set all the remote APIs and local dummy APIs, which contain those registers, and help to locate the correct destination. We deal with the memory virtualization by implementing every protocol in the NTPT. 
that we implement the sequential consistency. Generally speaking, it brings significant overhead, but we have to do that. Memory model used in our target architecture, X86, implements X86 TSO, and it's weaker than sequential consistency, but still a strong one. Its key point is that when the write happens, the write must be buffered. It can be a potential optimization if DSM can achieve a weaker memory model. However, if the CPU executes an MFAS, the buffer must be flashed. Since we cannot capture the MFAS, only a conservative strategy can be applied. I briefly described the every protocol. Every memory page at each page has, at each node has one of three states. They are modified, shared, and valid. The page with states can read and write, read only, and cannot read or write, respectively. The protocol is also called MSI protocol, and that they are also MESI and MOESI protocols using the cache system. They are also sometimes using every. The owner is the node holding the latest data. The manager is the node knowing which node is the owner. The copy set is a bit map recording which node holds valid data. There are two memory operations, read and write. Two operations on three states produce the scenarios shown in the table. It's okay to write a modified page or read a shared page. Under many conditions, a node usually needs to fetch the latest page from the owner. If a write fault happens, the node has to send invalid messages to the nodes indicated by the copy site. This is because if the page acquires the write permission, the data of other nodes may be stale. When we talk about virtualization, there are several related addresses that we should take care of to implement a DSM. We don't care about GVA because we don't use the SPT. The EPT can choose the mapping from GPA to HPA. The host page table can choose the mapping from HVA to HPA. We need to intercept one of them to achieve permission control for DSM. The reason why we use EPT is that ROC of the whole KVM component is around 30,000. But the memory management component of this kernel is more than 100,000. As EPT not no, it's a component called MU notifier that stands between EPT and the host PT. Now our host PT is modified, such as swap and TSM. Notifier will manipulate the EPT too. It's why host PT can be used to implement the DSL, but it also brings trouble. And then if the current state of a page is modified, the swap will drop the corresponding EPT entry, which leads to the loss of the DSM information. So we need extra data structures to record DSM information. Second, for some special devices who, which have two MMIO regions in the GPA space, they share one region in the HVA space. The SM software should keep the consistency of these two regions, so the extra data structures must be based on HVA rather than GPA. And for network transmission, GPA is used because HVA at different nodes is different. The accurate time synchronization across the distributed environment can be tough, and we still need to hack the timekeeping system for the sake of the correctness of some functions like sleep. In a simplified model, a guest time is calculated by the host time plus an offset. As you can see in the figure, if two instances are started at a different time, their guest time will be inconsistent. So we need to synchronize the offset at the beginning. The third part is the evaluation of giant VM. Our evaluation is conducted at a cluster with four machines, as well as Ubuntu. Which line we use is a standalone machine. First, let's look at some micro benchmarks which are related to memory. Read only operations or writing local pages are free lunch because uh, they do not require page or cache line transformation. They have perfect scalability and performance. Next, we consider the worst case in theory, that is, write a global shared page. It will lead to plenty of state transformations, but we found that the giant VM performance approaches or exceeds the baseline. When we replace an RDI main network with a slower, a slower IPO IP network, there is even speed up. 
Real text means continuously logging on or logging one or more real text. Well, we see the significant applicability in these two figures for both giant RAM and baseline. When files contained under similar variables, giant RAM suffered from a larger latency because of the network. The further illustrated by figures, the unit of CPU 0 is invalid. So the CPU 0 sends an invalid message to CPU 1 at the beginning. Upon receiving this message, CPU 1 takes time to process the request. For example, giant RAM spends some time updating EPT and flashes TRP. And then the figures look like this. The modified unit payment plan across the CPUs. The memory of good origin flow can do useful work with, with any vCPUs and modified states. But for the latency oriented workload like a new text, unless unlock message arrives, even if the page is modified, it is blocked. The best of architectures are the MA and IPO IB can be distinguished with different latency of setting invalid. For the throughput oriented workload, a slow message is better. The red boxes in this figure means that the whole system cannot do any work. As there, are, there are five red boxes in this figure, but only three ones in the previous figure with slow invalid messages. On the other hand, a fast invalid message is beneficial to latency oriented workload. A fast unlock event can recover the work can, can recover the work of blocking thread. Another scenario is that the working set may span across multiple shared units. That the modified and invalid units may distribute it like a mosaic shown by the figure. The pure one can write the first shared unit, but it has to wait for the second unit. After acquiring the proper permission, the third unit becomes invalid again. For Kubernetes right for the cache system, suffer from this phenomenon. Now look at the, now let's look at the CPU intensive benchmarks. They achieve linear scalability and total performance degradation is only 25% on average. There are few pages between all these. There are few shared pages between all these threads, and they are the perfect workload that can be applied on giant web. At last, we compare with Spark. We write two text processing pro programs using C language. They gain two times speed up on average. For the future work, DSM is still a major challenge. Currently, we are working on a new DSM protocol that is based on the cache coherence algorithm, TARDIS. TARDIS DSM uses time step to explicitly to all the instructions and replace the interrupt lag invalidation with the cooling lag for active requests. We also consider relaxing the memory model via parallelization. In conclusion, Giant VM improves the viability to implement SSI by many to one utilization, and we analyze some interesting phenomena. Here is our website. Thank you very much.